everyone. For our today's video, we are going to have a book talk about Education for Citizenship, Ideas into Action by Niklo and Katie Holden. This book heralds the important principle of John Dewey that schools have the responsibility to bring democracy into schools and classrooms. It says that in order to educate children to think and to participate, one must use interactive participatory methods of teaching. The National Curriculum identifies that teachers should be of firm commitment to the following key sets of values. It includes truth, justice, honesty, trust, and sense of study. The integration of the social values with the learning outcome significantly enhances the focus of the program. Citizenship education requires students to develop confidence to voice own opinions, develop skills in recognizing the views or experience of other individuals and groups, develop skills in critical thinking and in developing arguments, develop skills of cooperation and conflict resolution, trust in their creative powers, develop skills of democratic participation, and gain experience of taking action for change. A basic tenet of citizenship education is that controversial issues should be included for discussion. We would agree that it is the role of the school to provide opportunities for honest and truthful discussion about points of conflict and agreement that can be found in the real world. It is often contained that schools are many societies that reflect the world at large, and learning to live in this will prepare the children for adult life. But how can we give the students a voice? How can we give them the sense of agency of their own ability to achieve change? One of the things that Program of Study for Citizenship is is fostering the learner to create informed decisions about current moral and ethical issues. This can be done by acquiring the competencies to justify oneself orally and in writing about such issues and that they learn how to consider other people's experience as well as understanding the significance of media and its role in shaping values. So we can conclude that to be able to produce good citizens, teachers must be taught the following. Power of media, persuasive language, how to respond critically to views of other people, and appreciate the value of other culture and traditions. Every educational institute are concerned to provide a curriculum that is relevant to children's lives. A part of this means providing opportunities to students to learn how to become helpfully involved in the life and concerns of their neighborhood and communities. Children should develop an understanding of the different communities to which they belong, and they should develop an appreciation and respect for the difference of chapters explains the issues and the concepts on living in a democracy, understanding the justice and the law, and how to build empathy and understanding, globalization and the exchange of goods and culture, and promoting active global citizenship. If I have the right, I also have the duty. It is the main idea in extending social and moral education. All schools would claim to teach social and moral education in some forms as teachers recognize that good social skills, including operation and respect, are the fundamental to effective teaching and learning. For example, there are some articles in Summary of Universal Declaration of Human Rights, like in Article 1, that we are all born free and we all have our own thoughts and ideas. We shall all be treated in same ways. In Article 3, we all have the right to life and to live in freedom and safety. Article 6, we all have the same right to use the law. In Article 11, nobody should be blamed for doing something until it is proved. When people say we did a bad things, we have the right to show that it is untrue. 
Political literacy has consistently been a difficult area for teachers. They feel that politics has no place in the classroom and their understanding is not sufficient. However, a healthy democracy needs an active citizens and their role in supporting democratic processes. In addition to this, introducing a global dimension means more than the studying the activities of people in places beyond our own locality. It involves learning about the relationship between ourselves and others, and it can be typified as a social, cultural, and